Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 70th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. And to start off, I just wanted to quickly talk about the status of the A5 untethered jailbreak for the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2 for 5.0.1. Now, first of all, the other day on Twitter, it was announced that Sark had helped make major contributions to the untethered A5 jailbreak. And as most of you know, Muscle Nerd is actually working with Pod2G Posix Ninja and Planet Being to create the untethered jailbreak for the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2. So essentially we have a super dev team that's actually working on this jailbreak and Sarek, the creator of Cydia, actually helped them and provided them with invaluable data that actually helped them to make progress on the jailbreak. After that, Planet Being, one of the members of this new super dev team, tweeted out that they're out of sandbox thanks to Sarek's help and his contributions and that this untethered jailbreak is turning out to be more complex than X Gold 618. And for those of you that that don't know, he's basically just comparing the complexity of this jailbreak to that of the iPhone 4 and GSM model iPad 2's baseband. So basically he's just saying that this jailbreak is turning out to be more complex than they had initially predicted. And then after that, Pod2G announced on his blog that they made it out of the sandbox and they are still working on getting the untethered jailbreak ready, but that it should only be a matter of days. So hopefully, thanks to these new developments, we will see an untethered jailbreak sometime in the near future and I don't want to speculate but hopefully it should be within about a week or less and always remember that I will keep you guys updated on the status of any jailbreak whether it be an untethered or tethered jailbreak for the latest iDevices or some of the older iDevices I will keep you guys updated so just remember to stay tuned for all of the news related to future jailbreaks and I will also have you guys covered as far as tutorials go. Kind of along the same lines, Apple released iOS 5.1 Beta 3 the other day and if you're interested in it and if you guys want to see what 5.1 Beta 3 brings then you can check out the link that's down below in the more info because it does have Apple's change log. But perhaps the best thing that iOS 5.1 Beta 3 brings, at least for iPhone 4S users, is the reintroduction of something that was missing from the iPhone 4S up until now and that is the option to actually toggle on or off 3G without having to toggle on or off data completely. So this is really great and I don't know why Apple changed that in the iPhone 4S, but according to sources it has made its way onto the iPhone 4S with the release of iOS 5.1 Beta 3. Also at CES this year, Acer announced a upcoming service that they will offer called Acer Cloud and essentially it looks a lot like iCloud. If you look at the two different graphics that they used, they almost match up completely. The scheme looks almost identical, and they even used some similar names to Apple to actually name part of their cloud-based service. And the thing that comes to mind right now will be their upcoming cloud-based picture service, and they're calling that PicStream, which is extremely similar to Apple's photo stream. And if you guys want to check it out more, I will have a link to that down below in the more info. Also, OnLive announced a new service that they offer, and that's basically streaming a virtual machine to a mobile device. And for those of you that don't know, OnLive has actually been streaming console games to things like mobile devices, computers, and TVs for quite some time now, and they're actually starting to expand and go into different aspects of cloud streaming. And like I said, with their new service, they will actually be able to stream virtual machines to mobile devices, and eventually they will add support for things like Android based devices and actual computers in the near future. With this service you'll be able to have Windows essentially on your iPad and basically the advantage of using OnLive over something else such as VMware or Parallels is that you actually do not have to have a host. It streams it to you from their host so it's all hosted on their servers so if you guys want to learn more about OnLive's new service and you want to figure out how it works and the structure that they have set up for the service then you can check out the post that's down below. Another awesome thing that was announced at CES this year was Liquipel and Zag's new technology. They offer the same thing however it's slightly different and what it does is it allows them to completely waterproof electronics by using a special form of vapor that bonds with the electronic device and it prevents water from seeping in and it also repels it at the same time so you'd be completely safe if you dropped an iPhone in a lake and you had Liquipel on it you could pull it out and you could use it the only difference is that Zag is actually looking to license their technology out to companies such as Apple so they would actually be able to include that technology in the product itself without having to pay for it on top of the product also Apple sent out invitations for their education media 
Media event that's scheduled to take place on the 19th of this month in New York City. And it's speculated that they will have announcements about iBooks and also that they might break into the textbook industry. Now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about a next generation iPhone rumor. So a new analyst has come forward and they're speculating the next generation iPhone will be sleeker and slimmer than the current iPhone. And it will offer a totally different design while also offering a new type of Qualcomm chip that will allow it to operate on all 4G LTE and 3G networks. So this would definitely be some great advancements in the next generation iPhone. And I have all the details on the post that's on my website. And probably the coolest thing that was actually demonstrated at CES this year was Samsung's upcoming smart window technology. And at this point, you're probably wondering what a smart window is. Well, the name itself is actually a good descriptor of what it offers. Basically, it's a new form of window that will be capable of accepting touch input and displaying different bits of virtual information on the window itself and you'll be able to interact with it. It will be kind of like a tablet window, but don't worry, it will be on a one-sided pane so neighbors looking in through your window won't actually be able to see what you see on your side of the window. So this is some really great technology. It's extremely advanced and it's said to go into mass production in a couple of months. So with the right price point and the right marketing techniques, it's possible that we could start seeing this type of technology everywhere in a short amount of time. Also, I released two new videos since the last episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. The first one was a video showing you guys how to root or jailbreak the Amazon Kindle Fire on the latest firmware. And it's definitely a lot easier than the last tutorial I did. And I also did a full and in-depth review on the Sony PlayStation Vita. So if you guys wanna see those, I'll have links to them down below. And I'll also have links to everything else I talked about in today's episode. Don't forget that you can gain additional entries to the giveaway I'm doing in collaboration with Friday Night Cranks in this video simply by rating it up, favoriting it, and leaving a comment down below in the comment section with a special phrase. And that special phrase is actually on our semi-new website that we released specifically for this giveaway. And if you guys want more details on the giveaway and if you guys wanna actually know what the phrase is, go to fncicu.com and you'll learn more there. And if you aren't already subscribed and you wanna be notified every time I release a new video, just be sure to hit that subscribe button and if you wanna be updated more often, don't forget to like my Facebook fan page, follow my Twitter accounts, and add me to one of your circles on Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.